Now, it's a good news, bad news thing. The good news about social isolation is that you paid $250 less at the gas pump last month and $375 less going out to eat. The bad news is that your grocery bill is now $1,585 and your pay-per-view bill is over $200. Solution? Put down the ice cream and listen to classic episodes of Thrive Loud. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey, Thrive Loud listeners, Lou Diamond here. I hope you've been enjoying the great set of interviews we've been having here on Thrive Loud. Unbelievable guests, incredible entrepreneurs, leaders, famous folks, media personalities. You name it, we've got it. We've got a whole list of guests. If you haven't heard some of the recent ones, go back and listen. They're all engaging, fun, and really, really educational on top of all that. So you might learn something as well. Today, we're going to pull an episode from Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive with Joe Giese. But before we do that, just a few admin notes. First of all, if you haven't yet, go download the Good Pods app. And you could go follow me at, at Thrive Loud in Good Pods. It's the best place to listen and connect to podcasts and find out what your friends are listening to. It's like social media meets podcasting and they have crashed together and it's a wonderful place to listen really great environment some unbelievable content and you learn about shows that you might not have ever gotten a chance to hear about so it's a great place to find the shows to listen to go check it out good pods get the app download it follow at thrive loud next on the list be on the lookout for thrive loud live coming in the month of may 2020 we're going to have a couple of really fun guests where we'll be on both facebook and youtube You'll have a chance to interact with some of our guests and myself live, and the episode will be recorded, obviously, and played on the Thrive Loud program. So looking forward to that. With that, sit back, relax, and enjoy a great conversation with the amazing author, Joe Giese, pulled from the Bedside Readings Authors That Thrive podcast here on Thrive Loud. Welcome to Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive, a podcast show that provides you exclusive access to top writers around the globe and how they are thriving through their writing, their passions, and their lives. Here's your host, Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to Bedside Readings, Authors That Thrive connecting you to amazing authors that are thriving through their work and in their lives each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today, we have an award-winning radio journalist, author, teacher, community activist, and former TV reporter. As a special correspondent, she was part of the Peabody Award-winning team at Marketplace, the most popular business program in America, garnering numerous other awards in radio as well. Her book, Never Sit If You Can Dance, Lessons From My Mother, is her latest, and we'll have fun talking about it today. Please welcome Joe Giese. Joe, how are you today? Oh, I'm, I am really okay. I think uh, people are sometimes surprised to hear that um, in this crisis, that, um, that people are, can be okay, um, that not all of us are, you know, have totally fallen apart on our way to the grocery store or something. But I think actually it's a lot of the lessons in this book of mine, Never mm -hmm. Sit If You Can Dance, which is a really good mindset for a crisis like this. For the listeners, we're recording this at the time of Mar late March 2020, and obviously we're all going through the coronavirus, and uh, I'm calling you from New York. She's in lovely Malibu, California, with a much better view than I have today, and she's enjoying a view, but understandable. We're all very sensitive to what's going on. Joe, can you share some of these lessons, I guess, from your mother, Never Sit If You Can Dance, that help set the right mindset? Well, one of my favorite, and one that seems immediately applicable to today, but um, is, is good almost any time when you're going through a crisis or a crunch, is mom's lesson about make the best of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, this applies back to when, um, in 1961, Hurricane Carla with 175 mile an hour winds. I mean, we don't even talk about hurricanes with winds that high now. It was headed to smash into Houston where we were living. And my family with three kids, our neighbor with five kids, we're all going to evacuate in my dad's small car. Except when our neighbor also brought a parakeet in a cage, my mom realized this was not going to work. <laughs> so instead of evacuating, mom invited all the neighbors to gather at our place around a campfire of candles and lanterns. And we hung out playing games together. And luckily, the hurricane missed us. But I still savor waiting for Carla as one of the scariest but also friendliest times of our childhood, my childhood. So now this current crisis that we're going through is different in that we're denied the comfort of gathering together. Yeah. But my mom's attitude can still help in this emergency. When we're sheltering in place, let's try to use this time to create memories with those we love. Um, and I, I think that's a good idea. Another, um, another thing that mom was really, um, uh, thought was really important and th which I think can really help us in this current time, but any time is her idea about don't be drab. You know, all these folks who are, always wearing gray or black. They look a little like death itself. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I saw your gray sweatshirt. I'm not, this isn't personal. Um, Nothing, none, no, no personal taken. It's a light gray with a little flare, flare of orange in it. That's very okay. sparkly, bright, vivid, yep. beautiful gray. Um, but when times get tough, like now with the coronavirus, all of us could use a little extra comfort. And that comfort could come from color, happy bursts of bold color. Um, my mother, um, who was called Babe, and she was some Babe, uh, always said, don't be drab. And I think now, with what we're going through, and the times are so tough, that a happy splash of color can just perk up all of us. Um, even if we're just sheltering in place and can't, but most of us can still go out and, um, and take a walk, you know, six feet away from people. And um, in these dark and gloomy times, whether you're a man or a woman, why not give it a chance? Practice color therapy. I mean, I'm really serious about this. Don't settle for wearing something drab and gray and black now. The news is dark enough. I mean, really. Instead, grab something colorful, even if it's just a red scarf, a turquoise tie. Well, not a turquoise tie to go with your sweatsuit, but a pink sweater. That splash of cheer could bring some comfort to you and the people who are six feet from you. Um, my mom practiced this all the time. And it's gotten to be so much a part of um, my life and my friend's life that, I mean, nobody comes here for dinner unless they're wearing something colorful. <laughs> um, Which is true, by the way. I've noticed this, that, and this is on the artwork that people will see on this podcast. You have very bright, it's it red or orange, of uh, uh, glasses, and it's a look on your books. What, what, what is the color of choice that you see stick out? It's okay. red. The, the book itself is this kind of wonderful golden color with r red ink on it and a red dress. And my signature color is really red. When my husband and I got married 12 years ago, um, I wore a red wedding dress. Um, hmm. in, in India, which I yep. love India, um, a red wet, wedding dress is a symbol of good luck. Yep. And uh, since it's also my favorite color. Joe, curious here as as this topic, what what made you decide to write these lessons from your mother? Now, well, um, it wasn't it wasn't really a decision I made when my mother was ninety five. Um, she was living in Houston, 
And for a variety of reasons, um, she started living in a senior community. And, um, and she blossomed there. Hmm. And um, she'd been living at my sister's place in Houston, which was terrific, except there wasn't the social interaction. And my mom was a very sociable person. And there wasn't the social interaction at my sister's house that there was at the senior community. And all of a sudden she had um, this whole group of new friends to eat with, go out with. And um, I was really dazzled by that because I wasn't expecting that. And uh, one of the people in her dinner group there was a woman whose um, daughter and her son-in-law uh, published a magazine in, in Houston called Buzz of Los of, of, of Houston. Houston? <laughs> and so I wrote a, a piece for that, an article for their magazine uh, called Sometimes Life Begins Again at 95. And it was so well received and I had so much fun writing it that then I wrote um, another piece for them. And then after a while, I kind of let that set for a little bit. And I thought, you know, I've got a lot more of these. So I just started writing them one by one with no, I didn't want to put any pressure on myself. I wanted to enjoy the process. You know, sometimes writers say, oh, it's just like pure, pure, you know, pure torture to write. Oh, I just hate it so much. Well, I um, I started after that uh, first piece that I wrote, um, and I did write that while my mom was still alive. Uh, the the rest of them I wrote after she died. She died five years ago, okay. and um, and what was really a pleasure for me is it was as though she was still with me, like on my left shoulder. I'm writing these stories whether it's a story about being a Taoist, um, whether it's a story about never leave a compliment unsaid. I love that so much. Um, or people don't like to be around depressed people. Um, and uh, so it, it, it was like she was still here because, and what was really kind of fun, at a book event, um, an old, old friend of mine showed up and uh, which was very kind of him. And he, you know, it was time for audience to ask questions. Richard said, how did you get so much specific detail? Um, and so correct. Did, were you taking notes over the years? And no, I wasn't <laughs> taking notes. What it was is that these stories were still so vivid and alive for me that they just, they just poured out. And it was a pleasure. Would you say for the readers and the listeners here that there's one particular lesson that sticks out more than anything else in the book, maybe to you, um, so that they would, you know, give it as, I don't want to steal the whole book with all the different lessons, but is there one particular one that sticks out more than another? Well, um, I have many favorites, um, uh, including Go While You Can about traveling. My mom and I used to love to travel together, but I, I guess the one that might be most useful to people listening now and who want to read the book, and it would make a great gift. It's a small book. Uh, it's a pretty book, and it would make a great gift now to give to somebody to cheer them up. But the le lesson that I think right now, when we're going through this troubled time, might be the first one, never sit if you can dance. And what this really is about my parents danced. Um, they didn't do the kind of exercises we do today. Um, they did the swing and the foxtrot. And, yeah. um, uh, and I grew up watching them dance. But um, I think that uh, nowadays, right now, if you're sheltered in place by yourself, you can, or or if you're sheltered with your family or too much of your family, you can, and you're feeling like a little cabin fever coming on or just a little like unhappiness, like how long is this going to last? There's nothing to keep you. 
from turning on some music and moving your body. Yeah. And it will relax you. It will raise your spirits. It will, I guarantee it'll make you feel better. And you don't need to know how, you know, the precise and intricate steps of how to tango. Uh, <laughs> when I talk about uh, dance in the book, Never Sit If You Can Dance, I'm really not talking about that you have to know how to dance because some people could be intimidated by that. Go, oh, no, I can't dance. I've got three feet or something. What it's really about is get up off your tush and move. <laughs> and um, and because what sometime, you know, I was asking mom, I said, what, what was that about all that dancing you and dad did? And she looked at me like I was, you know, weird for asking because it was so much part of our family and she said well it's never sit if you can dance mm -hmm. and i think nowadays that could be particularly a particularly helpful um tip lesson for people to follow just to get up move around and you know and if you're sheltering in place and there's nobody around nobody's going to see when you make a you know, <laughs> fool out of yourself unless you want to put it on Instagram or somewhere. But um, uh, very helpful, Joe. I want to ask this question. It's it's it, it's a good one because it's one I ask most of the guests on Authors That Thrive and on the Thrive Loud program, and that is on days when you're not kicking on all cylinders and you're trying to figure out how to get back on track. Is there a practice you seek or an individual that you seek out to help you do that? So my question to you is. Do you step up and dance when you feel like you're down a little bit? Um, I move. You move. I um, okay. And um, because some people might be intimidated by dance. Oh, well, you know, she's a modern dancer. She, well, I always danced as a child. But uh, probably what I do now, as much as I move, which I do a lot of, um, I also take uh, walks, um, either in nature to a waterfall. I love to walk to a waterfall, you know, with all that water coming down and all that energy. Well, most of us aren't doing that right now, but most of us can get out and at least walk a little bit around where we're living. And um, that just is so refreshing for me. Joe Giese, Never Sit If You Can Dance, Lessons From My Mother. Thank you for sharing a little bit about the book, why you wrote it, what it inspires you about, and these great messages that people can use specifically today at the time that we're recording this, right around all the, the craziness with the coronavirus around the nation. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people will enjoy your book, but also enjoy your messages as well. Uh, thanks, Lou. It was fun. Thank you for listening to Authors That Thrive. Brought to you by Bedside Reading. To learn more about today's guest, head on over to BedsideReading.com. And don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts or follow us everywhere on social media at Bedside Reading. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening. <laughs>